Well, I've returned to the Colorado Center in order to witness a key part of the work of the center, which looks into this very question. Now, John, could the Shroud of Turin itself have actually wrapped a human body? That, of course, is a question for science. And uh, at our center, we have looked at that because that's a key point for authenticity. But our approach is to look at the image. You've got the body image and the blood stains. So the first step in our process was to create a three-dimensional body, an accurate three-dimensional body. And the way we did this was to uh, have a volunteer who was CAT scanned. And then the x-rays from the CAT scan in sequential slices were then cut out after being digitized right. and assembled to make this three-dimensional model. So this is actually from a real person laying in the attitude implied by the man of the shroud. Right. The second step was to make a cloth model of the shroud that we can use to evaluate the correlations that we would right. be looking for. The markings and all the other details. Yes. And we have here a uh, cloth model right. on linen. And we've uh, drawn to scale the body image that you see here. Right. And you can see the blood stains uh, on the image. So for that, that blood stain is that one there. Exactly. Right. So, John, what you're going to do now is to lay this cloth and wrap the body to see if the markings fit. Yes. And we constructed this cloth drawing an image to scale mm -hmm. to the actual shroud. Our criteria mm -hmm. for uh, laying this cloth out on the body consists of two parts. The first is that all the blood stains, such as we see on the shroud, right. uh, all these blood stains must make natural contact with the body because we know that these are uh, actual blood yeah. from chemical analyses. The second criterion is that where the cloth naturally contacts the body, we want the image that we have here to also contact the body. Now, if we look carefully, uh, first of all, you can see right here that this is where the tip of the nose is. Mm -hmm. And I think we can uh, accommodate a slight adjustment where you see the tip of the right. nose yeah. to make that work. Right. Okay, now, let's move down and check a few things. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the wound in the side. Right. So now... Uh, where a spear would have gone in. Yes. Right. Notice that that is a natural yeah. contact point yeah. on the body. So, if you'll allow me, what I'm going to do is to take this image of the hands and I'm going to pull it up to meet our second condition. And now we have the hand, the arms. If you want to come over here and feel, see the fingers? Yeah, can the fingers you, are directly correlating to the, the image. Yeah. Right, so you can feel that. And now you have the forearms. See how the forearm image? Yeah. And now we've got to do something about this. So I'm going to pull the cloth I see. up to this location just below the chin. I can't go any further because I have to have the tip of the nose right. making natural contact here. When we make the, the, the hands mm -hmm. align Fit. properly, yeah. look now what happens to the blood stain at the, at the bottom of the cloth. That matches. Roll it back. It it's exactly where a nail would have been in a, of a crucified man. Yeah, it's arguably where you would expect it to be. That's amazing. So uh, things look very And reasonable. where is this on the... Um, it's it's sure. this right here, part of the bottom of the frontal image. Okay. Now, let me just roll back the cloth here just temporarily, and let's look at how the dorsal image with, with the feet, mm -hmm. how that aligns. So I can just bring that up, and I think you can see how nicely the dorsal feet uh, touches the point, yeah. You see that? Now what I'd like to do while we're at this point is uh, to focus in on two blood stains. One is this trickle coming off the dorsal heel. Right. And this blood doublet that is just off the frontal blood image. Let me, let me show you where these are on the okay. shroud so we don't lose track of where we are. The blood doublet mm. is right here. It's just off the frontal uh, blood stain that we see. Right. Okay. Now, the trickle of blood we'll off the heel, be up the other end. we have to walk clear down here. 
and we see the right. blood trickle here. Okay. Okay. Now those are the two blood stains I want to talk about. All right. What's interesting and noteworthy mm -hmm. is that to place the cloth around the head of the body brings the two ends of the shroud together. Now let's examine this in more detail. So I'm going to put the cloth back, the okay. top part. I'm going to bring up the bottom part like this. And when I do that, look what happens. Oh, I see. You see that dorsal trickle and the frontal doublet touch each other. And that's how they, that, the, the doublets would have come right. about. They, they just come together and kiss. This blood stain here mm -hmm. so is correlated and associated and has its origin in the, tri in the blood trickle clear at the bottom of the feet. <laughs> we know from our studies uh, directly on the shroud in 1978 in Turin that the blood stains precede the body image. So what you're going to have to imagine then, if this is the work of a forger, mm -hmm. is that this forger is going to put on the blood stains first, and then he's going to compose this magnificent body image by some technique around those blood stains, and moreover, is going to have to put these blood stains in such a way that they work three-dimensionally around right. a cloth okay. that touches the body. Um, I can't put my mind around somebody being able to do that. I, because I, I know it's a huge difference. What you're saying is yeah. working, if you were a forger on a two-dimensional mm -hmm. object and trying to forge yes. that. Yes. And, and when you take it three-dimensionally, it's a completely you, different. You, you thing. have to think of this th three-dimensionally. You, if you think of this as just a two-dimensional uh, image on cloth, you, you're going to miss these things. Okay. While we're on this kind of a of a of a subject, let me show you another thing. But we're going to have to go around okay. to this side uh, of you know, the other side of the cloth, and I'd like to uh, point out another interesting anomaly. Do you see the um, the blood stain coming down the forearm? Yes. And then we have a blood anomaly coming off to the side here. It's and it's even it's even it's away off from the, the side. Body. Yeah, it's away yeah. from the body. Yeah. Now let's see exactly where that is on the shroud. So we'll go up here to our shroud model. We're looking at this, this location. You've got the blood coming off the frontal image, going off image, and we see sort of a double uh, blood markings uh, at that location. 